aftermath of a transmission that was sealed uh, with silicone sealer and it looks like that there were no gaskets used so they decided to replace the gaskets with this fine job of high temperature orange silicone sealant it's all in the transmission it's everywhere which brings me to the reason why I want to talk about sealing Muncie's but before we talk about sealing Muncie transmissions let's go on eBay and look at the wonderful bargains you can get on gaskets and seals. Okay, I'm searching for Muncie gasket set and I'm going to sort price and shipping lowest first. Which you will notice you're going to come up with obviously the cheapest gasket set first, which is $8.95 plus $2.95 shipping. And I want you to take notice that this gasket set only has one bearing retainer gasket. Second gasket in line, which is about $12.30 combined with cost and shipping is an auto gear gasket set. These are very good gasket sets and it has two bearing retainer gaskets and I know this set very well and it has one bearing retainer gasket that's 15 thousandths thick and the other is 30 thousandths thick. But what I never liked about these gaskets was the shape of the side cover gasket. It doesn't fully support the area of the cover as well as the case. This is a truck gasket set here below we have two other gasket sets that come with bushings and seals they look identical uh, this particular one has a flange type rear seal these are pretty good seals three sidearm seals o-ring and a bushing one below that is the same we have another auto gear set over here these particular sets have 32 spline output shaft seals and bushings it can be very confusing this set over here has gaskets that are wrinkled and it's almost $20 for this set of gaskets. And here we have my gaskets for $18.95 that I'm selling on eBay. And if you notice, they look a little different. Um, they have the sealant printed on the gasket. Some people call this Printo Seal Gaskets. If you also notice, it has three front bearing retainer gaskets. It has a 63 only gasket and two 64 to 74 front retainer gaskets that are 15 thousandths and 30 thousandths inside. So I'd like to actually show you the installation of these gaskets now on an actual transmission. I've been using this gasket sealant, the 518.13, it's an anaerobic sealant on my transmissions for years. It's extremely expensive stuff and it's a little messy. It's better than silicone sealer, as you could see in that little clip that I showed you on the intro. And that the fact that it doesn't dry externally, so you can wipe it down and it doesn't really gather up inside if you over squeeze it. It kind of dissolves in the oil. That's a good thing and it's a bad thing. But the problem with sealants is training people to use them sparingly. And the fact that they're very expensive and there's kind of a messy cleanup again afterwards. Conventional paper gaskets are just that. They're paper gaskets. There's a company called Interface that's made in the USA uh, that makes a variety of different compounds for gaskets. They're pretty good. There's several different versions that they use. The problem is on eBay, there's a bunch of people selling gaskets as well, very cheap, and people don't seem to mind buying gaskets that are cheap anymore and spend hundreds of dollars building a Muncie 4 speed and then put crappy gaskets in it. I never get that, but they do. So I decided to come up with my own gasket that solves two issues good paper and better sealing qualities. So let me go over the seals. So this is your typical single lip seal that's used in most of the auto gear extension housings and also some people are selling them with gasket and seal kits on eBay. Notice it's just got a single lip here. So that means nothing is protecting the oil seal from any dirt and grime that may be exposed when driving on the road. This is the most common flanged oil seal. It's also a single lip seal with a little bit outer edge on it a little bit more of an aggressive outer edge that can help as a double lip seal. This here is a nice true double lip seal. You can see here it's got a lip inside and a lip over here and plus your outer little seal over here for dust. So you've got two lip seals and another shielding seal over here. This seal is a beautiful seal and the best seal to use when you want to prevent oil leaks and you want to prevent contamination of dirt and grime attacking your major oil seal in the back over here. So again, look at the difference between these two seals. This again is your more common seal that you see on eBay. And this is a true double lip seal. And this is the flimsy little seal that you get when you buy a new extension housing from Auto Gear. Again, they may all work, 
but which one is really going to last the longest? Now gaskets. I always sell gaskets that are shrink wrapped and on hard cardstock so that they can't get damaged. Uh, selling gaskets in bags and loose is ridiculous. Now my new gaskets are my Redline series and they have sealant printed already on the gasket so you don't have to worry about using Permatex or anything like that. Let me go show you how I install these types of gaskets. Okay, so I got this Muncie ready to go together. Normally what I will do is I'll take the sealant and I'll put it on like this. You could just use a skin coat of this stuff. It works very well. The advantage of this product, of the 518-13, is that it's like crazy glue. It dries as soon as you compress the two components together. Uh, anaerobic sealants basically set up with the absence of air. So once the thing is compressed, it dries. Silicone sealers, a lot of times, because there's no air inside them, they can stay wet, wet in between the surfaces. So if you're putting the transmission in the car right away and filling it with oil, silicone really isn't the best thing to use. So I never use silicone sealant. I've seen transmissions weeks later taking them apart and the sealant is still wet. So basically that's what you do. You're going to lay down a foundation of sealant, then you're going to play the gasket on it like this, okay? And if you want, you can clean it up a little bit, get rid of some of the excess. How pretty does that look, right? And this stuff is a little tacky, so it'll hold the gasket in place. Then you put another layer on. Now some people just squeeze a bead down. I really don't like doing that because you're going to get a lot of excess in the unit. So, I don't know, maybe it's not the healthiest thing to use uh, your fingers. Maybe I should be using gloves, but I, I tend to get a better feel this way. But you probably should be using gloves just to be safe. I may develop cancer of the fingernail at one time or another. Who knows? But. So now I've got my gasket with sealant on both sides. But I want you to realize the time involved to do this. Now if you're just a hobbyist and you're doing this for your own car, it's probably okay to do it like this. But I build a lot of transmissions every day and honestly, this is getting a little bit boring and time consuming. So that's why I came up with these gaskets I'm about to show you. But let me glue this together and put the rest of the components together. But this is the procedure for putting on gaskets with the anaerobic gasket sealant, the Permatex 518-13. Okay, so before we use this stuff, and by the way, I'm not endorsing this product or anything like that. As a matter of fact, Permatex wouldn't even give me the time of day. But I still like using it to tack gaskets in place, but watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a little bit here, and I'm gonna put a little bit over there. Maybe a little bit over here. Just to hold things in place. Now I'm going to put my red line gaskets in. Done. So what happens is this gasket has a bead of sealant already printed on it. They also call this a printo seal type gaskets. You see this a lot on intake manifolds. So you got a bead of sealant around the gasket. And so when the thing compresses, it squashes out the sealant, just like you would with your regular sealant. It's a very small, few thousands lip height sealant on it. It's that simple. Done deal. No messing around with gaskets. And the nice thing about this, when this unit goes together, there's going to be nothing squashing out. It's going to look nice and clean. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a little sealant on the bolts to act as a thread locker. Or you could use a small conventional thread locker like this from Dynatex or Loctite. But a little bead of this stuff on the bolts won't hurt. So you can see I got the unit all together. And I'm going to just put the bolts in.
Like I said, all these bolts have sealant on them. Yeah. These top three are 3 8 16 the bottom are 7 16 14 bolts. Get in there for you so you can see what I'm doing. There. They're all in with all the sealants. So you want to torque these gaskets down in two stages. I'm torquing this down to 15 foot-pounds first. And then I'm going to do it 25 foot-pounds. I go across over the other, the two middle ones first. Then I do the end ones. So these first are 15, okay. Now I'm going to do the top and bottom ends at 15 as well. And the reason why I'm doing this is because you don't want to torque down on this gasket too hard because it's got a bead there and you can rupture the gasket. Now we got 15. Now I'm going to change my crappy uh, Sears Craftsman wrench to 25 foot-pounds. One thing, never get these torque wrenches because they don't warranty torque wrenches for a lifetime. Both sides at 25 foot pounds now. And now the tops and bottoms are next. Now I can go check all the rest of the bolts just to make sure. Now notice that the only place any sealant would come out is where I used it to just tack it in place. All right, so I got everything clamped together, the tail, the mid plate, and the main case. And if you notice, there's not even a drop of sealant anyway because it's all part of the gasket now. Look how pretty that looks. Nothing overhanging, nothing leaking, nothing to wipe up. It's a cleaner looking build, saves a lot of time, and seals just as good. When it comes to counter shaft sealing, what I usually do is I'll press in the counter shaft until it just about catches the front bore. And I make sure that there is no grease, of course, on the counter shaft because I've pressed it through the gear outside of the case first. Then I use a little bit of that 51813 and I'll put it inside the bore like this. Now, this is especially good for used cases because if you have an imperfection in the case, you'll be able to at least take up some of those imperfections in the bore with this type of sealant since it's an anaerobic sealant like crazy glue. Of course, these new super cases, they have a little ridge over here for a Welch plug that goes in here to aid in additional sealing of the counter shaft bore. The gasket set includes two different front retainer gaskets, one that's 15,000 thick and one that's 30,000 thick. Now, if you look at most gasket sets on eBay that are cheap, they only include one gasket. And the reason why two gaskets are included with different thicknesses is because a lot of the bearing retainers differ in size now. Let me show you the, what I'm talking about. To test what gasket is correct, put your bearing retainer on first like this and push it against the transmission. And you'll notice that if you take the thin gasket first, I'm going to just show you one of the regular thin gaskets. You can see you can put it in here and it's not even, you can still pull it away. So what happens is if you use this type of gasket, you're going to literally bend the bearing retainer around the bearing and crack it. And that's why sometimes you'll see cracks along bearing retainers over here because the gasket's actually too thin and not really supporting the retainer. So a quick way to check to see what gasket you need is to put either the thin gasket in first. So even with my gasket, okay? Put the thin gasket in first, it's not grabbing. Or go with the thick gasket. And that, of course, can't go through, so we would use this one and compress it down. Now, take another brand retainer, put it on. Notice you can't even get the thin gasket in here. So in this case, you would use the thin gasket. So sometimes different retainers from different companies have different heights, 
and you're going to require either a thin gasket or a thick gasket. That's why they're included and that's the right thing to do. So I got my lock plates all set up already with the bolts in there and with sealant on the bolts. This is the short plate. The one on my right hand is the long plate. I'm going to put them down here for now. Okay. I'm going to use this retainer which requires that thin gasket. I'll put a little sealant here just to hold the gasket in place. That's it. That's all I need. Lay it on like this. See how pretty that looks? Slide it in place. I'll catch the bottom ones. Catch the top ones. Front retainer bolts can torque down to 25 foot pounds. So I'm going to gradually bring this gasket down. Same way I did the extension housing gaskets. I'll do this at 15 foot pounds and then 25 foot pounds. So 15 foot pounds first. Then I'll readjust the wrench for 25 foot-pounds. Do it again. So basically 10 more pounds. And again, because we have that bead of sealant, it allows it to gradually spread out on the gasket without trying to blow itself through the gasket. So I put a couple of drops of sealant here. You can actually use uh, any type of adhesive you want. And I'm going to just lay that gasket down like this. And notice the, the printo seal pattern on the gasket. It's all good. Can I put some sealant on the bolts? Each bolt, always hand start them. Side cover bolts get torqued down to 18 foot pounds. So we're gonna do 10 and then 18. Usually run them in with my gun. These are all at 10 now. And I'm, I'm doing it gradually because I don't want again to pop the gasket. Now I'm going to bring the torque wrench up to uh, 18. So we got them all. I'm just go through them again. Make sure nothing settled down. There we go. When it comes to speedometer fittings, these fittings are relatively cheap. And it's always good to put a new one in. You get a new O-ring and the old ones sometimes didn't have a seal. The new ones have a seal in it. 
But you want to make sure that the seal is at the right height because a lot of times you'll put the gear in like this and the seal is not touching the gear. So I always have to press the seal in a little bit deeper to make sure that it, it definitely works on the, the gear itself. Um, there's threads in here. With the new systems, it really doesn't matter which way the threads go, okay? But on the old systems, it did. But the new system, sometimes you're going to get gears where the threads are in a different direction. But they seem to all work fine, just as long as you have a seal here now. So you take your little grease, grease the O-ring up. So once the O-ring is greased and you feel that the seal is at the proper height, just put the fitting in the transmission. Uh, we have new hold downs. Kind of always make sure that this little edge of the hole down, if you notice this little kind of angle edge, is facing upward. I, I think the way they, the reason why they did that is so nobody would catch their hands on a sharp edge. I, I don't, I don't know why, but other than there was no point over there. That's the only reason why I can, I can think that that edge is like that. Hope you enjoyed this short video. Please subscribe. Thank you for watching.